What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on this episode, Monday Night Raw. Pretty enjoyable episode, man. I uh, love the 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 continuation of these stories and feuds leading up into Bad Blood. Bad Blood is shaping out to be a really good PLE, and I can't wait for it to happen. This is one of the few PLEs I'm I'm just like really just hoping these weeks go by quicker man because it seems like it's going to be a good show and I, I can't wait to see it so we got to start about uh, start with how the show started off started off essentially with a semi cold open um they cut to the back and you see cm punk pulling up he pulling up in his vehicle he hops out no smiles no, just straight business and you knew he was on straight business you knew he was if we were going to get a different CM Punk because the car door was open. He left the car door open. He left the car essentially running. Any person that leaves their car door running, like they not car door running, but leaving their car open, the door open, the keys in the ignition, you don't care. That's how you know somebody's ready to crash out because anybody can steal your car, but you can give a fuck about that. He had something to say and you knew it was about to be something different. So they, the camera follows him all in one shot all the way to the gorilla position and all the way out to the ring. And he's not smiling. Yeah, at one point, he takes off his shirt. It looks like he's ready to fight, which I'm all for. He's not smiling. There's no kneeling down at the entrance for it's clobbering time. None of that. It was straight business. Got in the ring. Pick up the microphone. And... When I say he was essentially just like, I want to say not dead inside, but he had this, this tone of darkness of nothing but evil thoughts in his mind. Like normally when CM Punk's giving a promo, he has some inflection. He has some color life to his voice. This was the first time I've ever heard him give a promo, probably in a long time where it just sounded nothing but despair and death and pain that's all he had in his voice and that was very noticeable because he's he's talking this entire way the entire promo you know he talked about you know how many more matches he has left people asking how many more matches he has left um and he was like you know i have plenty more matches left and then he talked about you know this match being a hell in a cell. And he's like, how many more hell in a cells do he, does he have left? And he said, zero. And he, he talked about how, you know, his family didn't want him to do this match. He talked about how his wife didn't want him to do this match. Essentially, he even, you know, he kind of said he really doesn't want to do this match. But there's something inside him the devil that's inside him said yes you must do this match and i like how he brought it full circle he said we was in portland and i said this when me and you drew went face to face i said this do not do not you know push me to that point and now we're at that point now the devil inside of me is saying we have to go there and you can tell that this was going to be intense you can tell the way he's building up this match that we're going to see some violence because he made it very clear he said look i can't prom i can't make i can't promise that i don't kill you because i'm not going to make a promise that i can't keep so we're in that realm of murder now <laughs> but he said i can promise you this He's looking at the hard cam and then the camera that's in the ring. I can't promise you this. I'm going to make you bleed. I'm going to hurt you. There will be pain. And I like how he ended it off very like evil like. Like there's no amount of remorse or love or anything in what he said here. He said, I've made peace. If this is my last match. I'm okay with that. I am completely fine if this is my last match. But Drew, I need you to understand. I hope you've made peace. I hope you, you've made it very clear to yourself that 
this could possibly be your last match ever. Because what I plan on doing in this match, where I plan on going, I'm taking you to hell with me. And he got really close to the camera that's in the ring. This was so good. This was really, really good. And I love the acting here because he's basically selling the idea that, no, there's no Mr. Nice Guy here. This is going to be simply destruction at its finest. And I loved every bit of this. And then he got out the ring. No, like I said, no happiness, no jumping for joy. This is what I wanted him to be on that type of time. And I loved it. And then after that segment, Drew McIntyre is recording himself, like watching it or after it happened because he's at home. And I love the promo he gave there. He had his wife recording it for him. I love this. He, you know, he captioned it. This is the CM Punk I want. And he's like, you know what? All right. I'm here for it. That's fine. You know, uh, this is this is the version of you I want. You know, saying you you have your convictions. You know that that's fine. You know, I I I, I like the point. I like the fact that he made. Well, the point that he made is like, you want to know how many matches you're gonna have after this? Zero. So I'm gonna rest up. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you, I, I believe he's supposed to be on the show next week, you know, so I don't know if he's going to be there, but I'll be back soon, so, but I like the fact that he responded on social media, like, this is what I want, this is, this is what it's come to, this is what I wanted, I just want you to know, I'm willing to go there with you, but you won't have no more matches after this, so, love what they're doing there, this is some good stuff, hey man, this is the best feud on WWE television right now. Next, I wanted to talk about the um, Jay Uso and Braun Breaker promo for their Intercontinental Championship match they have uh, next week. It's going to be the uh, main event, I believe, next week on Raw. Looking forward to that. This was good. This was very good. Jay came out there with the usual yeeting going on. Braun Breaker comes out there. Uh, he had a cool little leather jacket on. You heard the dogs barking for him. He comes out there and, um, well, before, uh, Braun comes out there, Jay's giving his promo saying, you know, you know, he's, he's ready to become main event. Jay Uso win his first solo title. Braun Breaker comes out there and Braun has a scathing promo. I love this. And I love what they're doing with Braun in the sense of he's very comfortable on the microphone. So what he's saying, you can buy in, you can believe it fits his character, the stuff that he's saying. You know, he comes out there, are there any dogs in Portland tonight? And all year is hoo, hoo, hoo. So he's getting comfortable with, you know, what he's doing out there. He's he's killing it. It's future future star in the making. Like they they're doing a really good job of Braun Breaker. Uh, but he basically says, Look, man, I get it. You know, I get it. You're trying to make a name for yourself you're trying to break away from your family you're trying to get get you some championships without your family's help i get that but me i ain't need that you know i i didn't need my family i didn't need my dad i didn't need my uncle all i need is this championship ship right here the intercontinental championship i didn't need that to be a dog i don't need them it's funny you know, he said, I, I did some research on you. You've been here for 14 years, 14 years. And I've only been here for about six months and I've accomplished more than you've done in 14 years. It was nice promo from him. Jay fires back. Nice, uh, you know, nice rebuttal. It was like, you're right. I have been here for 14 years and I've been winning championships and traveling around the world while you were still in diapers. But when it comes to next week, I'm a dog walk your I'm a dog walk your ass. So after Jay said he was going to dog walk his ass for the Intercontinental Championship, he said a pretty cold line towards the end. He said, "We are gonna see what you made of. We are gonna see how long this lasts. This you know this persona of yours lasts. This idea of yours lasts. It may end up being short and sweet." Like your NFL career. And 
Boy, that was a good one because Braun Breaker's facial expressions was spot on. He looked pissed. The crowds oohing and on. You knew a fight was about to break out. That, that was so good. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Jay Uso actually being serious, firing up on the promo side of things. That was a good one. That was a good rebuttal. He ended up paying for it at the end of the show, but that was a good rebuttal for sure. So at that point, Braun Breaker ends up hitting him. You know, he walks away, then ends up punching him in the face, and he's about to set him up for the, the spear running off the ropes. He runs off the ropes, and Jay Uso hits him with his own spear, and Braun was selling it. Like a million bucks. He's flopping all over the ring. Flopping outside the ring. He sold it though. He sold it like a million bucks. And Jay Uso stood tall in that particular segment. Love this back and forth. If you have a chance, go check out the promo they had back and forth. It was really good by both men. And it gets you hyped even more for this Intercontinental Championship match next week on Raw. Um, Next, we got to talk about Bronson Reed versus Braun Strowman. Um... They pretty much had a vignette package for Bronson Reed talking about all the people he's destroyed and how Braun Strowman only got a championship, a uh, potential championship opportunity because he caught COVID. And he's like, I'm going to finish the job and add him to the list of victims I've you know, destroyed on this show. Love what they're doing with Bronson Reed. So we pretty much get to the match and the match essentially doesn't even really start because they're trying to get at each other, and Bronson Reed tries to get at Braun Strowman as he gets in the ring, and um, Braun Strowman kind of sidesteps him, and Bronson Reed runs chest first into the top turnbuckle, and the top turnbuckle falls. It completely falls. So essentially, the match is, I guess you could say it was called off because it fell, if there's no top rope. So then at this point, they just start brawling. Um... Braun Strowman uh, tosses Bronson Reed outside the ring, and he's about to do the little, you know, thing. He runs around the ring and shoulder tackles people. But as he was about to do it, some random uh, plant in the crowd, he had a, a yeet shirt on, got tossed out of nowhere by Bronson Reed into Braun Strowman. I was like, all right, well, you know, if that was a real fan, that would be a lawsuit, right? So that was a cool visual. And then, of course, we get the obligatory, um, the obligatory, uh, um, the, um, y'all know which spot I'm talking about, the, the barricade spot. We always get that. Um, Bronson Reed's over there trying to catch his breath. Braun Strowman tackles him through the barricade. Um, then Bronson Reed gets up. He's walking away through the crowd, through a fish with officials. Braun Strowman gets in the ring. Bronson Reed's talking his trash all the way on the opposite side of the ring. Braun Strowman said, "I'm basically, I'm not finished with you yet. He goes all the way to the area where they at, and he pushes Bronson Reed into some production crates. Now everybody's trying to get involved. Security is getting involved. Now they're fighting backstage. The chaos is beautiful. JAG security is getting tossed left and right. Braun, uh, Braun Strowman throws Bronson Reed into like the, the wall on top of some crates, and more fighting is going on. Braun Strowman's throwing security guards, and then randomly, Braun Strowman said, Get this golf cart out of my way. Huh. He flips it over. Somehow the camera feed cuts off. So um, even more chaos. And then we cut back to Braun, uh, Bronson Reed on top of the, the crates. And he essentially does like a, a mini tsunami to Braun Strowman through some uh, uh, tables back backstage, man. That was a cool little spot. Uh, Bronson Reed ends up getting up. Braun Strowman said, nah, 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 nah. We not doing that. And essentially tackles Bronson Reed through this uh, wall of sorts. And they both ended up laying out as more security and officials get back there, man. <laughs> it was great. I love it. I love what they're doing with, with them. These are two guys just essentially crashing out on each other over and over and over. I love it. This was a fun segment. Great segment. Crash out night. Uh, uh, crash out season was in full effect in this potential segment. Uh, well, in this entire segment. And I loved every bit of it. Next, we got to talk about Sammy coming out there trying to challenge Gunther once again. Basically saying, hey, Gunther, you're, uh, you're scared of me. 
This is why you don't want to accept the challenge. You're scared of me. You don't want to face me because you know how this story ends. That's when Ludwig Kaiser comes out there like, Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? You, you, you can just have that one win over Gunther and let it be it. That's the highlight of your career, but that's it. But you don't deserve a championship opportunity for a Gunther's world title. So relax. Chill, my boy. Just be okay being mediocre. You got one win over him. You got lucky that day. Let it be it. And I love what Sammy was doing here. Because Sammy, he's he's good at breaking up factions. Sammy was like, man, I get it. I get it. I mean, you out here trying to, you know, make a name for yourself. I understand. I mean, that's why you end up attacking, attacking your friend and Giovanni. You know, and now you're out here trying to defend Gunther's honor. But at what point are you going to stop being his lackey and start having a mind for your own, essentially? He's trying to plant those seeds of, of doubt. Like, At what point are you going to actually be a man yourself and fight your own battles? Stop trying to fight his battles. Stop trying to hype him up. What about you? What about what do you want? When are you going to stop being behind him? Love what he was doing there. He's planting those seeds. And... It looked like uh, Luke with is actually kind of thinking of it. Then Gunther comes out there. Gunther comes out there. He's like, I'm going to address you, Sammy. But first, Luke, what do you got to say? You got something to say? And then it looked like uh, Luke is going to stand up for himself and say, you know what? I do got something to say. And then he attacks Sammy. Of course, Gunther was in on it. He's laughing, you know, and he's attacking Sammy. And then uh, Luke ends up. Lifting up Sammy so Gunther can speak to him. And Gunther's like, the answer is still no. Like that uh, Bugs Bunny meme. No, the answer is no. So as he's walking out, uh, Gunther's walking out. He's, you know, smug, happy at what happened to Sammy. Um, He turns and you see Sammy grabbing hold of uh, Luigi's leg. And uh, Gunther's like, oh, finish him off. So he turns back up to the ramp. Ludwig looks like he's about to finish him off, but Sammy ends up suplexing him, hitting him with the Haluva kick as Gunther turns around to look back, and basically Sammy's like, hey, I'm not going to stop. I'm coming for that uh, World Heavyweight Championship. I just need Sammy to go ahead and just attack Gunther. When Gunther's giving like a backstage promo, just attack him. That's the only way you're going to get this match. You have to attack him. Attack him, force him to say, all right, bro, you want this match? You didn't attack me. You are trying to injure me. All right, fuck it. That's what you're going to have to do, Sammy, because he's not going to give you a match willingly. You're going to have to take it, Sammy. Take the damn match. Beat him up. So, oh, I also forgot to mention this. This happened early in the show, and I definitely wanted to talk about this. The New, J New Day versus JD and Finn Balor for the Tag Team Championships. Now, earlier in the show, um, Jay um, was talking to Rhea and Damian Priest. And Xavier comes up there and he basically, you know, lets them know, like, look, man, I know y'all got issues with ju uh, Judgment Day. We do, too. Um, but if you could just not get involved in our match tonight, I know y'all may want to, but don't get involved because we want to win it on our own. Just like y'all wanted to win y'all matches, you know, win and defend y'all titles on y'all own. Can y'all give us the same respect? And Judgment Day and uh, Jay said, all right, cool. We'll do that for you. You won't. We won't come out there. So we get the match right. <laughs> the match happens, and it was a pretty, uh, pretty solid uh, standard tag team match. But things started to change when the Judgment Day, the rest of the Judgment Day, came out there. But then the LWO members came out there to assist, and because of that. Um, then you had Kofi goes to the top and he does that little suicide dive, you know, the little trust, not suicide dive, but it's like a trust fall, a backwards trust fall to everybody that's fighting on the outside. The ref goes out the ring to try to get Kofi and get everything situated while Kofi essentially, while Xavier essentially has to match one. It's like a one, two, three, four, five, six count. And Xavier's like, what the hell? The match is one, but the ref's out there dealing with the carnage and trying to get Kofi back into the match. So after that happens, obviously the distraction and the time it took to get the ref back into the ring and uh, it cost them the match. Xavier ends up 
essentially losing and and Kofi wasn't there in enough time to stop things from uh you know from the pin happening so Xavier ended up eating the pin he ends up losing so at the end of the match Xavier's pissed he doesn't even want he doesn't even want Kofi to console him or nothing he's pissed off he's like bro I can't take this anymore so we come back from commercial break and you you know um they're trying to interview Kofi and Kofi's like hey not right now I'm trying to see where Xavier is and you can hear Xavier yelling you don't know what's going on and then Kofi runs back there and Xavier is essentially yelling at the members of LWO and Kofi's like, why are you yelling at them? You know, he's mad at them because he's like, bro, they got involved in our match. I didn't want nobody out there. And because they were out there, they cost us the match. He's like, well, I told them to have our back just in case something went down because I knew that Judgment Day was going to play the number game. And Xavier said, wait, so you told them to come out there, but you didn't tell me about it? And he was like, yeah, man, we... we we can't do this by ourselves. You know, we don't have Big E. And Xavier's like, oh, so I'm not good enough. And without Big E, I'm not good of us. We're not good enough to win the tag, the tag titles. I'm not good enough. I'm not a good enough partner. You didn't even tell me that you were going to do this. If anything, you should have told me that they were going to get involved. You didn't say nothing. And he kind of storms off. And this was good. This was good. But obviously, they're, they're teasing the hill turn. But it's a justifiable one. It's all spurs from carrying cross planting those seeds, but it makes sense. Kofi didn't tell him about this. This is not the first time Kofi didn't tell him about what the plans were. What the plans was. I mean, remember what happened with Odyssey Jones? He didn't tell him about that. So I like the story they're telling there. We're gonna get that heel turn. The question is when and how. I'm looking forward to it. So I wanted to make mention of that because I did forget to talk about that. Um Next, we got to talk about uh, pretty much the ending segment between uh, the match between Damian Priest versus Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Dominic was getting destroyed. Majority of this match, we knew the number game was going to get involved. Obviously, Damian had Rhea in his corner and Dom um, had the rest of Judgment Day. And, you know, of course, things, you know, they would get involved here and there. But we knew, but, you know, that was going to be the case. But ultimately, Damian Priest ends up packing up Dominic Mysterio, he beat the crap out of him. I ain't gonna lie to him. Majority of the match, he beat the crap out of him, hit him with his finisher, South of Heaven, and it was GG's. And before Damian Priest's music could even play for two seconds, they started jumping the shit out of Damian Priest. I mean, they jumping the hell out of him, bro. And then obviously, Rhea tries to come in there for the save, but ends up getting taken out because of her, her knee, leg injury. So you hear the crowd chanting, Yeet. Yeet, yeet, as they both getting stomped out. And then guess what? Jay does come out there for the save. But I knew something wasn't right because he didn't immediately jump in the ring. He kind of looked and he just stopped. So I'm like, oh, they're waiting for something. And boy, were they. This was such a, it was framed beautifully. Because all you see is someone in a black hoodie speared the living shit out of fucking Jay Uso. He speared this nigga into oblivion. Oh my God, that spear was beautiful and brutal. Jay was incapacitated. And then the rest of Judgment Day to proceed to beat the crap out of Rhea and Damian Priest. Uh, Liv hit her finisher on, um, on Rhea Ripley. And then Finn uh, goes up the top to hit the coup de gras while they're both holding, like, while they're holding Damien's legs and his arms. So he's fully extended. Hits the coup de gras not once, goes back up there, hits the coup de gras again, then goes back up there and hits another coup de gras. Damien is getting packed up. Rhea got packed up. Uh, Jay Uso got packed up by Braun Breaker. And uh, once again, the Terror Twins are, you know, dispatched. As they should be. The numbers game should be something they have to really, truly deal with. Um, but we'll see how things plan out. I don't know if they're going to keep beating their ass for the remainder few weeks into bad blood. But overall, it was a it was a uh, a pretty good segment. And uh, uh, Judgment Day looks looks strong once again. So, but overall, enjoyed the show. Definitely hyped on bad blood. Can't wait for the PLE. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all rate the show on scale of 1 to 10. What was y'all favorite match and or segment of tonight's show? But I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.